There's an undeniable pleasure in the fantasy of tracking down and taking out a monster. And playing a hunter in Evolve is all about realizing that dream. Now, not satisfied with merely letting four people unload their clips into something much bigger than them, Tularot Studios has designed four very distinct classes for Evolve, all of which play wildly different than one another, but need to be played in cooperative unity. Even within those classes, there are very distinct loadouts. All going to show you there's more than one way to bring down a Goliath. I guess at the beginning of the game, the, the ideas are there and you're ready to set to, you know, start to make it happen. What was the concept of the hunters? What was the core thing that was essential to sort of fleshing them out? The main thing was giving them the tools that they needed to actually take down this massive monster and to make it deep enough to get people to play, like keep them interested for an extended period of time. So that was the main, the main thing is figuring out what those tools are and how to actually fight this monster who was not developed and designed completely <laughs> already. So it's like a difficult problem to solve when you don't know how to fight this thing that isn't built. Did you already see sort of the, the four classes? Like what was kind of the, the strictures you were trying to work within? It was all theorizing, basically just sitting around speculating on, well, what would you want to do? How would you stop this monster? How would you fight him? And then we'd actually just build them, and implement them and test them at a very early stage and see how it played out. And then the, the good ideas, they just kept getting developed further and further. And they became the things that are actually in the game now. They may not be the most novel of the aspects, but the hunters, you know, just based on proportions, you know, people will be spending a lot of time playing as them. What was kind of the key elements to make the hunter experience memorable and special. The first part's obviously the gameplay and making sure that the gear is there and the gear kind of helps the co-op happen, right? Every 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 class has a role and an important part to play. And so there's that aspect of it and then and then there's the really the art side of it, which the VO. The VO personalities. You've got the games that will sort of have the generic guy, right? And we like having characters that you can kind of fall in love with and get to know. We look for like really strong archetypes. There's a fine line between archetype and stereotype. Stereotype is a negative thing. Archetype is sort of a celebration. The big thing is that we want the characters to feel new and fresh, but also familiar and, and kind of comfortable, right? Like, so when you look at Markov and you hear him talk, oh, okay, I get it. He's the, he's the big boisterous, you know, Russian guy who likes to fight. I get that. One of the things that we decided to do sort of later in the process was kind of go a little bit stylized with them. Not only does it make them easier to sort of pick up in the game, but it also sort of exaggerates their character and reinforces that lovability. In, in terms of developing out the various hunters, as, as time went on, how much of it was just kind of a moment of inspiration and then trying to make that work with inside the gameplay? And how much was, as you were developing what the monsters were like, that it kind of necessitated that other qualities be demonstrated in the hunters? I mean, there's, there's, there's such an interesting back and forth between those two elements of the game. It's a merger of both constantly because you, you create a character and then you play him for a while and you see how the monster interacts with him and how your teammates interact with him. And he just changes and adapts that way. And then, like with Bucket, you just see what their personalities are like and then you push that further and try to make it cooler and just goofier and funnier. I've got a rocket launcher, might as well use it. It is kind of interesting that with the characterizations and, and, the, and the aesthetics of the characters that, you know, sort of the, the, the more material aspect of them, which is what the gear is for each one, there, there seems to be quite a bit of harmony. You know, Markov's gun seems like the gun that, that Markov should have. So what we did was we took all that big pile of gear and we said, okay, what goes really well, you know, with the lightning gun? We felt like arc mines went really well with that. And we started piecing gear together and that wound up sort of being themes, you know, Lazarus 
having a silent sniper rifle with the ability to cloak and the ability to bring people back from the dead leads to a very stealthy character, right? I kind of arranged all the gear in theme, so, so all I knew was that Markov's gear was electricity-based. I had no idea what the character might look like or anything. I just know that it's electricity-based, right? And then the, my job's kind of done, and I hand that off. Okay, well, I get it. This character, is kind of, he's lightning-themed. He's electrical-themed, you know, and then you start thinking about... You know, where can I take that? Yeah, okay, Bucket this. couldn't take its head off and send it off into the world. We had, to we, had, we had a lot of fun with Bucket. I will admit, he for for out of the, all the characters, I'd say Bucket probably has more than his fair share of personality. Once the character team decides we'd really like to have a robot, then it kind of comes back as like, well. If it's a robot, we can do crazy stuff. Like his arm could be a rocket launcher. That sounds cool. Again, it goes back to us being 13 year olds and being excited about, like if I was a robot, I would want to have an arm that could shoot rockets and I can fly my head around. That would be awesome. <laughs> so that's what, that's, that's what we do. Apparently, I'm pretty good at this. And then you also have, you know, perks. Each, you know, hunter is like, okay, I want to be able to move faster, I want to be able to heal faster. That's a lot of variables to, to take into account. I mean, when was the decision that you wanted to give just one more option to the player to kind of really distinguish their character? I mean, I, 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 I definitely have seen advantages from it, but boy, did you add a lot of work on your end. We see teams uh, collaborate sometimes and say, okay, let's all take damage the extra damage perk. And so they, they know that they're sort of sacrificing like armor or, or movement speed or some other thing, but they all know that they're gonna focus on doing damage that round, you know? So you'll see individuals make decisions about what my favorite perk is, but you also see teams coordinating and coming up with sort of these high level strategies, which is really fun. It just adds to replayability. Can I play a hundred rounds and still feel like there's more stuff for me to try. Ideas come from all over the place. Everybody's playtesting a game, and then you find out really cool ways to push it even further, which is awesome. Obviously, a lot of attention has to be considered to like how a map works and how it sort of maintains the fun, but when you have varying traversal methods, be it monster or the jetpacks, I mean, how did you have to rethink approaching level design? We didn't know what would work and what would be fun, so we really were starting at zero. Yeah, we really wanted the world to have that feeling of kind of isolation. So immediately you have that feeling of like, there's no way off this planet. 